Hi everybody, so today's video is all about the... Wait, where's my... Patty. Today's video is all about the X-Pro 3 from Fujifilm. Wow, big surprise, Zach was talking about the X-Pro 3 again. <laughs> so, you know, I don't know if I'm really qualified to make a legit camera review here on YouTube. I am not a full-time professional photographer. I don't rely on the income that I receive from photography as my primary source of income. It's a secondary source for me. A lot of what I do is just me being a photo enthusiast. So take everything I say in this video with a grain of salt, but I have used the X-Pro3 for a variety of different situations, including personal and professional work over the past five months since I bought this camera. Um, and I'm just gonna talk a little bit about it. So we're not gonna go into all the detailed specs we're gonna talk about the real world use of this camera and the kinds of images that it's creating. And I'm gonna show you a lot of sample images and tell you my thoughts about the practical use of this camera. Um, if you want to learn more about all the specs and the details, I'm sure there's someone on YouTube sitting at his desk with like the teal and blue lights behind him, slightly out of focus, like waiting to tell you every last spec that's in this camera, but that's not what this video is. This is gonna be a practical uh, review of the Fujifilm X-Pro3, so stick around for all the juicy deets about this camera. So while I literally just said I'm not gonna talk about specs in this video, there are some key features of the camera that I wanna just run through really quickly so we have a baseline. So this camera is made by Fujifilm, obviously. It's a 26, megapixel X-Trans sensor, which is Fuji's newest sensor. It's in the X-T3, the X-T4, the X-100V, the X-Pro3. This particular camera has an optical and an electronic viewfinder and a LCD display that's hidden and foldable. It has titanium top and bottom plates, which make the build quality really nice and premium. It shoots 4K video up to 60 frames per second. It has 11 film simulation modes from Fujifilm, including the new classic negative film simulation. And it's available in three colors. I have it in just the painted black version, but there's also a Dura, they call it Dura finish in silver and black, which is a little bit more high-end, supposed to be like scratch, more scratch resistant than the, the normal painted black one. Um, so the, this one starts at $17.99 and the other two are, are about $19.99 US. So um, kind of expensive for a uh, APS-C camera, but I think you're getting a lot for your money here. Okay, so let's talk about the camera and we're gonna start with the build quality. So, you know, one of the huge selling points of the X-Pro um, is the way it's made, right? The build quality is superb with these titanium plates on the top and the bottom. Um, it looks amazing, it feels amazing in your hand, it has a nice heft, a nice weight to it. Um, it feels very premium, it's gorgeous. Um, it has this hidden LCD display which is kind of polarizing. I actually um, have mixed feelings about this, but overall I really do appreciate this hidden display. This, for all intents and purposes, is an incredibly built camera that you can take with you anywhere. The construction is weather sealed. So basically I found that this camera is so small, light, and well built, and attractive enough for me to just pick up and take with me everywhere. So literally since I got this camera, I've pretty much taken it with me everywhere I go. And that's one of the huge benefits of it. It's compact enough, light enough, small enough, and uh, unassuming enough for you to just pick up and take with you everywhere. And that's a huge, huge plus uh, for the X-Pro. In terms of build quality, there's nothing about this camera that I would change. I think it's super well built. Um, I pretty much love everything about it. Okay, so let's talk about actually shooting with this camera. There are a few ways that you can use the camera. Being that this camera has a hidden LCD rear display, you're probably gonna use the viewfinder most of the time. And you have two options when you're using the viewfinder. You have an electronic viewfinder and you have an optical viewfinder. I find that I'm using the electronic viewfinder most of the time because it gives you an immediate preview of your exposure um, and your film simulation. And in my mind, it's like, why wouldn't I use that? You can use the optical viewfinder if you if you want to have a more uh, raw 
view and then just meter with the the meter that you can see through the optical viewfinder it basically gives you you know you can see through the glass of what you're looking at and then it has an overlay which is just you know it has your frame in a little box and it has exposure and some other camera settings that you can see what i find with optical viewfinder is you know you're more likely to miss a shot or not expose a shot in the way that you probably would have wanted it to be um, whereas if you're using the electronic viewfinder um, that's going to be less of an issue it's basically like having the lcd here in the viewfinder now if you're shooting with the x pro you can fold down the screen and shoot with the lcd but I just find that that's kind of awkward and I really don't like doing that. So I pretty much don't do that at all. So what that means is after I take a picture, if I want to look at it, I'm constantly having to fold the screen down to look and fold it back to shoot. And that's again, my choice in shooting. It's kind of annoying, honestly, to have to fold down and look and then fold back up. But that's one of the pros of this camera is that it encourage you, encourages you not to do that. But I also have this thought that it's like, it's 2020, we're using digital cameras where we can have an instant view of a photo that we just took on our LCD screen. We shouldn't be too proud <laughs> to not look and say, I'm not gonna look at the LCD screen. Like, I'm a photographer, I, I don't have to look at the screen. Like, why be proud? If you need to look at the screen, look at the screen, like, come on. So, you know, if I'm out shooting and I wanna look at the screen and I have to keep folding this down all the time, it's kind of annoying, but, you know, the trade-off is okay because it is nice to have this foldable screen that is just out of the way. You don't have to worry about it getting scratched or damaged. You can just throw this guy in your bag and not worry about it. Um, and you have the little indicator here, this panel on the back that shows you your film simulation and your ISO. Give and take, right? I think one of the reasons that I love this camera is that it's so different from my Canon system. And having this hidden display, is it's unlike any other camera I've ever used. And that makes it really unique and that's something that I really love about this camera. You know, love it or hate it, I think um, different photographers will have different opinions of the screen. So in terms of image quality, the photos coming out of the X-Pro3 are really phenomenal. I really don't have much to complain about in terms of image quality. I've used a variety of lenses since I got this camera, including the 35 f2, the 23 f2, the 50 f2, the 16 to 55 2.8, the 56 1.2. So I've used quite a few lenses with the X-Pro3, and I think with each lens you get, you know, a new character. But overall, the image quality coming out of this sensor is phenomenal. I've done several studio shoots with the camera, and it's you know, in a studio setting, especially when you're stopped down on the lenses, that's super sharp, the quality is incredible. It's often hard to tell the difference between a photo shot on the X-Pro3 and a photo shot on my Canon EOS R, for example. You know, the, the full frame 30 megapixel sensor versus the APS-C 26 megapixel sensor. You can barely tell the difference between the two. It's really phenomenal. If you've seen some of my comparisons between the Canon and the, and the X-Pro3, you'll know that there is a little bit of a, a crispness that's in the Canon files, just from the way that the camera system is built that's not here in the Fuji, but it's not enough to um, take away from images shot with this camera. It's not enough to make you choose the Canon system over the Fujifilm system necessarily. So um, really the image quality that's coming out of this camera is just phenomenal. And on top of that, you have the amazing film simulations from Fujifilm, which in my opinion, sort of give the Fuji system an advantage um, in terms of color because you have access to all of these amazing film simulations um, if that style fits what you're shooting. If you're someone who couldn't care less about the film simulations, then that's not gonna be a benefit for you, obviously. But for me, I found that the film simulations are really a huge um, benefit to shooting with Fujifilm. So like I said, I'm, I'm primarily a Canon photographer and I use my the Canon R system for pretty much all my professional work, um, which includes portraiture, the work I do for a lot of the performing arts companies in town here in Santa Barbara, like the Symphony and the Opera, where I'm shooting stage work, theater work, where I'm shooting images for posters downtown or in local papers. So I use my Canon system for a lot of that. But I've sort of fit in my Fuji and gotten some shots as I'm doing some professional work and it really holds up pretty well. The one thing that I will say is while 
you know, I choose to use this camera for my personal work because I enjoy using it and want to take it with me everywhere. And it's a camera that I can just take with me everywhere and always enjoy using. The Canon system is incredible, but it's not a system that I would shoot every day, that I would take with me everywhere. It's not as fun to shoot necessarily, I mean, for me. Um, so I just find that I'm gravitating more towards this and there's really not a lot that I'm losing in terms of image quality um, when I'm shooting with the Fujifilm system. I just love the Fuji system. The one thing I will say that's just to make sort of a generalization is that the Fuji system is a little bit less forgiving than the Canon system overall. And what I mean by that is when you're using Fujifilm, you have to be more conscious of the images that you're making. You have to really understand what you're going for in terms of composition, in terms of exposure. You have to have an idea of what you're shooting and really get that right in camera for the images to shine because you don't have as much room in post with the files coming out of here. And don't get me wrong, there's still a ton of flexibility with the Fuji RAW files, there really is. And sometimes you can get by with just even using the JPEGs and a lot of photographers do. But there's just something about the Canon system. When you take a picture with, with Canon, it's like, a, it's like a beauty factory. It just makes everything look beautiful. And with the Fujifilm, it's a little bit more real and a little bit more raw. And so I find that when you're shooting with this camera, you just have to think about it a little bit more. Um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, it can make you really slow down and think about your photography, especially with a camera like this, with the rangefinder style and no screen on the back. It really makes you slow down, think about your photography, frame your shot, get the exposure, dial your settings in so that you're really capturing the best image that you possibly can in camera before you take it into your computer to look at it in Lightroom or capture one. So that's just a general note. Some people will disagree with me. Just that this system is just a little bit less forgiving than Canon um, when you're shooting, just overall. So being a portrait photographer, um, I think there's a lot to be said about you know, the cameras that you use, the lenses that you, you use. I think Fuji has an incredible lineup of lenses right now. Um, I'm gonna continue trying out more lenses. I realize that the majority of my work has been shot with the 35 F2 and the 23 F2, um, and it's hard to compare those lenses with something like the Canon L series 50 1.2 um, and things like that. So I do wanna do some more comparisons with terms of lenses, but you know, I've really enjoyed shooting with this camera, um, shooting portraits with it, you know, with natural light in the studio, with studio lighting especially. It just, it has so much to offer and it's such a, a refreshing experience to shoot portraiture with this camera. This camera also offers 4K video up to 60 frames per second. And I just shot um, my EOS R6 unboxing, the actual unboxing portion was shot with the X-Pro3 um, and I shot a video recently about the 24 millimeter um, on my X-Pro3. It's a great camera for video, even though it's not necessarily, you know, built for video like something like the X-T4 or the X-T3. X There's not much that I would change or would complain about this camera. I think that it's it's pretty well-rounded. I will say that the only, the few problems that I've had have been in, in extremely high dynamic range situations. I live in Santa Barbara and I like to do some landscape photography and I'm often shooting the beach. And I took this out to the beach a couple times at sunset and was shooting some sunset shots uh, at the ocean. And I was finding that it was difficult to really get a great shot with this camera just because of the extreme high dynamic range of the 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 ocean um, at sunset with the with the light reflecting off the water. Um, I did try bracketing some shots and they turned out okay, but overall I just think I wasn't as pleased with the final images as I would have liked to be, which is not to say that this camera is not good for landscape photography. I have taken some incredible shots with the camera. Um, shots that would rival images taken on my EOS R system. But there are situations that this camera um, just doesn't shine in, not to say that it takes bad images, but just isn't ideal. And one of those I think would be extreme high dynamic range situations. And also 
uh, extreme low light situations. And I think that that's just a limitation of the smaller sensor size. And again, this is a modern digital camera. So the images you take are still gonna be good. They're probably still gonna be usable. But coming from the perspective of someone who has worked with other systems and other cameras, you do notice uh, the difference and sort of um, this, the, the smaller sensor falls short sometimes in really extreme situations. So that's just something to keep in mind. The ISO dial on this camera is something that some, some people complain about. Um, you have this little, uh, this little dial and you sort of have to pull it out to change the ISO. And now for me, that isn't really a problem because you can just set it to C and then change the ISO with the front command dial. So I find that if I'm um, shooting with with sort of a low light scenario, I'll keep the ISO dial set to C and then just adjust as I need to. And if I'm shooting with a lot of light, I'll just set it to 160, which is the, the base um, ISO setting here and not worry about the ISO. I think it's really okay. It does make you stop and look at it. It's not like using another kind of camera where you can just, you know, feel your way through it, you do have to like stop and look to change the ISO on here. And for some people that's that's not so great, but again, this is a camera that makes you um, sort of slow down and think about your images. And so having this sort of tactile dial on the top of the camera where you have to actually stop and look and change, it's like the fold down screen. It's just, it's an element that that causes you to slow down and really think about the pictures you're making and not just rush through. And overall, you know, this is a very different camera than something like the X-T3 or the USR. It's just a different breed as Fujifilm calls it. So overall, this is just a really incredible camera. It's definitely the, my favorite camera from Fujifilm that I've ever used. It has so much to offer. It has incredible performance for an APS-C camera. It really rivals any full frame camera out there. And I would say that if you had this as your only camera, I think you would be happy. The user experience is phenomenal and the images coming out of it um, are unique and special. They're unlike anything else really. Let me know what you think. Are you an X-Pro3 user? What's your favorite lens to use with the system? I know Fuji's coming out with some really exciting new lenses uh, that I wanna try out. So let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye. Love is free.